Hello and welcome everybody. In this video we will discuss section 3.3 and in particular 3.3.1 in our book. And this section introduces the first of several variance reduction methods and the method discussed in this section is the important sampling method. So first, why are these methods called variance reduction methods? The reason is that we have seen in the previous section that the error of a Monte Carlo estimate is determined by the variance of the estimator, so variance of Zn mc. And variance reduction methods are methods which allow to reduce the error given a fixed sample size. And given the error is the variance, that means reduce the variance. And for some reason, the name variance reduction method is the name which stuck. But what we're really trying to do is we're trying to reduce the error in our estimate. So let's see what we got. Before we look into the important sampling method, let us just recall the basic Monte Carlo estimate. The basic Monte Carlo estimate that nmc was given by 1 over n sum j from 1 to n f of xj. And that was an estimate for the expectation of f of x, where the xj are ILD copies of x. This means they are independent of each other and they all have the same distribution as x does. And our aim is not changed. So the methods in the next three subsections, the variance reduction methods we will discuss, they all want to use some variant of a Monte Carlo estimator, but the aim is the same. We still want to estimate that expectation of f of x. Now, what can we vary here? We will go through the assumptions on the xj and different methods will make changes to different aspects of these. In this case, we will give up the property that the xj have the same distribution as x does. And instead, we will see what can we do if we have different variables. The basic idea is we replace the xj with yj with a different distribution. So we need a bit of notation. So let phi be the probability density of x and psi be the density of another random variable y. And then what we had so far, the expectation of f of x, we have already seen we can write as integral f of little x phi of x dx. And I want now to write that as a different expectation with respect to y. So I need to somehow artificially introduce a psi. Let's try that. What I'm going to do is I'm just dividing by psi and then multiplying by psi. And this thing is an integral of something times the density of y dx. So that thing follows the same rule as the first equal sign did. Expectation of f of x is integral of f of x phi of x dx because phi is the density of x. And here psi is the density of y. So we will get expectation with respect to y. But the function is more complicated because we have now accumulated this phi over psi. So what we will get is it will be the expectation of f of y phi of y over psi of y. So that looks more complicated at first sight, but at least we have achieved our aim. We have taken the original expectation, the expectation of f of x, and managed to write it as an expectation with respect to y. I just copy that to a new page. We have expectation f of x equals expectation f of y times phi of y over psi of y. And on the surface of it, there is really not much to the important sampling method, namely the important sampling method now just starts with this argument and then goes on and says we know how to estimate expectations. So why don't we do that? So that an important sampling is just using the Monte Carlo estimate for the form of the expectation we wrote on the right. So it's 1 over n, sum j from 1 to n. And now we need iid copies of the y. So we plug them in here, f of yj phi of yj divided by psi of yj. Let me write that where yj are iid copies of y. And from this, we can already know that that's at least going to work. We don't know whether it's fast or anything like this, but we have just shown on the previous slide the expectation we want to work out. Expectation of f of x can be written as the expectation of f of y, phi of y over psi of y. And from what we learned before, we know the second expectation we can approximate using z and i s because it's just the usual Monte Carlo estimate for the second expectation. Now we get to choose y in this method and then corresponding to this psi, which must be the density of y for it to match up. And we get 
since it's a different expression, a different mean squared error. And the hope is if we choose y cleverly, we get a better mean squared error than for the original expression. So let me recall mean squared error of our Monte Carlo estimate Zn. We knew was variance Zn plus bias Zn squared. And we also have seen that the bias in this case goes away, so we just need to work out the variance because Monte Carlo estimates are unbiased, they have bias equal to zero. And that will apply to both estimators because both are Monte Carlo estimators. The original one we covered and the new one has this more complicated function, but still it's a Monte Carlo estimator, so our lemma about it being unbiased applies. So for both of them, we just need to work out the variance. And we know already that ZNMC, the original Monte Carlo estimate, has variance ZN equal variance f of x over n. And the whole question here is what is the mean squared error for the important sampling estimator? And that is now a bit lengthy calculation, but let's just do that. Variance ZN important sampling is, now I'll plug in the definition, variance 1 over n um, j from 1 to n. And now I have this complicated expression f of yj times phi of yj over psi of yj. And one of the rules, the first rule we used, we can still use 1 over n comes out as 1 over n squared. So what we get is 1 over n squared variance of the sum from j where j ranges from 1 to n of f of yj phi of yj divided by psi of yj. Then, if we think back, the next step was to take the sum out, and we can still do that if we assume the yj are independent. And I did write that, I wrote iid copies, that means independent and identically distributed, so the first i here says we can take out the sum. So what we get is the original mean squared error is what was on the previous page, where I took out the 1 over n squared, and now I take out the sum, and what I'm left with is variance f of yj phi of yj divided of psi of yj. Good. That is as far as we can go with the standard rules, and now we need to have some specially made argument, and what we will do is we know the definition of a variance, so variance x can be defined in two ways, and one is its expectation of x squared minus expectation of x and the result squared, or alternatively one could write expectation of x minus its mean squared. Both expressions give the same result, and we could use either of them here, and I'm going to use the second line just because we can, it allows us to take things a bit more apart and to look at terms individually, so we have simpler expressions to deal with. Good, so let's do that. Instead of x, what we need is, we need to plug in this complicated looking f of yj phi of yj divided by psi of yj. So the square is f of yj squared times phi of yj squared divided by psi of yj squared. And again, it's not entirely clear what we should do here, and if we don't know what to do, we can always use the formula with the integral. We just need to hope we can solve the integral. Let's try whether we can do that. So it's integral, f of y squared, phi of y squared, psi of y squared. I'm calling the integration variable y here, just because the random variable is called yj. And now we need to multiply with the density of the random variable. The density of yj is psi dy. That was the role. Integral the function, which is our complicated f times phi over psi squared, times the density, which is psi dy. Good. And now the obvious thing we can do is to cancel the square here with the psi here. So let's do that. And also I want to write that back as an expectation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write one of the phi densities at the back. So let's see what we get. Integral f of y squared, I write just phi of y because I want to keep another phi for the end. The psi, we had the psi squared, but one cancelled, so we just have psi of y, and then I write phi of y here dy. And now we have integral of some function times some density dy, so that is going to be an expectation. And we just need to be careful, phi is the density of x, so the random variable is going to be called x even if the integration variable is still called y. So phi is the density of x, that's what counts. 
So we get density of f of x squared, phi of x divided by psi of x. That is the first term we need for our variance. So we need expectation of the random quantity squared minus the expectation then itself squared. So the other term we are going to need is expectation of f of y, phi of y, psi of y squared. And that one is going to be easier just because if we flip back, we notice we have already done that. Here on the right, that result in the bottom right showed, we worked it out first thing, the expectation f of y, phi of y divided by psi of y, that equals our target, that equals expectation f of x. So we can just plug that in. So that equals expectation f of x squared. So, and now we just need to put it all together. So the variance we need, that is, let me just remind you, here in the top line, this variance we need to work out because it's part of this mean squared error. So variance f of yj phi of yj divided by psi of yj, doesn't matter whether I write j or not, is expectation of f times phi divided by psi squared. That's what we worked out first. And it came out as expectation f of x squared times phi over psi. Expectation f of x squared times phi of x over psi of x. And then the thing we need to subtract is what's written on the top of this page. So what we need to subtract is expectation of f of x squared. Good. And now there comes a trick, which makes it a bit easier to compare that result to the one we had for the original Monte Carlo estimate. Namely, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract and then add again the expectation of f squared. So I can write this as, I rearrange a bit. I first write one of the new terms, expectation of f of x with the squared inside the expectation. Then we write one of the terms we just had. I subtract expectation of f of x with the square on the outside. That's the second term for what we just had. And now the blue term I still need to compensate. So I subtract it again. Expectation f of x with the squared inside. And finally, I need to copy down the last term plus expectation f squared times phi over psi. And the reason I did this is, if you look at the first two terms, that is the variance of f of x, so using the rule we wrote earlier. And then the other two terms, they both have an f of x squared in, so we can combine them if you want to. We can write expectation of f of x squared, and then the first term has the 1, and the second term has this phi of x over psi of x. And that is our final result in the book. That is in proposition 3.23 that plug this into the formulas we had above. So let's just see what we still need to do. We have worked out the variance of f of yj, phi of yj divided by psi of yj. And that has a one over n squared in front and the sum and together this gives the variance of the estimator. And we know from the top that the mean squared error equals the variance of the estimator. So if we plug that all together, what we find is that the mean squared error of the important sampling estimator is this quantity we got here at the bottom, our result divided by n. And that is the result which you can also find in proposition 3.22. So that finishes the first part of this video, where we worked out for a given y what is the mean squared error of the important sampling estimate. And in the next part of the video, we will see how should we choose y, and that we do by just looking at the formula we have just seen and consider how can we make this error as small as possible.